that most teams really, really want to watch out for. It's kind of the, the new age of the Gragas Yasuo comp that we used to see for so many years. Yeah, it allows you to play around the Diana a lot more. Like, she actually holds up as time goes on compared mm -hmm. to other junglers, so uh, actually has some pretty solid late game. And yeah, as a damage threat, right? You can kind of play for her. You can, you know, it means you probably play weak side top side or something. Like someone's got to sacrifice to get her, you know, continued farm as time yeah. goes on. But uh, of course, a worthy play. Iconic is a very farm heavy jungler. He, he really is about the individual leads. Uh, so, you know, definitely a champion that can suit him quite well. But now I got to see the rest of the draft. Golden Guardian's got a lock in picks two and three here. Uh, Karma, again, still maybe the most highly prized support in, I think, North America and mm -hmm. Korea combined. Uh, Ezreal locked in, and, and now... it pairs super well with Ezreal. That is yeah. one of the lanes where, you know, this this is, this is turns Ezreal from the, my support's going to roam, and I'm going to sit back and farm with Qs, to we're actually going to push you in, yep. we're going to poke you out, we're going to try to dominate lane, you can go aggressive with Comet on the Karma, and really try to punish a lot of these scaling marksmen. Yeah, and one of the big things about skillshot supports, you know, like a Karma or a Blitzcrank or an Ezreal, it's, it's not that like in really high elo people are really good at sidestepping. Yeah, sure they are to a certain degree, but the primary way you play around skill shots supports is playing behind your minions. The mm -hmm. counterplay to Ezreal is play behind your minions. The counterplay to Karma is don't play next to your minions because she cues both of you. Yeah. She gets the wave pushed and hits you. Well, what do I do then? You can try to keep dancing around the wave and play diagonally to Ezreal, but that gets really tough really quickly. And you lose push oftentimes then because you you're fiddling push. around too much with exactly. that. Exactly. And then when they push, you're on a tower with no wave, and what blocks for you? Yep. Ezreal autos a turret, throws a Q, backs up if it hits. Autos a turret, throws a Q, backs up if it hits. Yep. What do you do about that? And it's it's so easy to hit skill shots on champions that are trying to farm under tower because it's so choreographed. You know when they have to shoot their auto attack out to last hit this minion. You can see where they are, they have to sit still. So you either give up farm or you get the farm and you tank the poke. Uh, and it can get difficult. Yep. Obviously Lulu's job here is gonna be able to time those shields try to absorb a lot of that poke. Yeah. And this is incredible scaling on their side. It's something that answers really well into the Diana as well. Polymorph very strong against Diana, these kind of squishy champions that want to have a, a lot of front load burst. Mm -hmm. If you can get a Polymorph off early, you can sometimes just 100 to zero champs like that. And uh, pretty good peel for the Jinx, obviously with the shields, with the wild growth. Bands coming through here. The Asso is going to be banned away. So no opportunity for Ioma to bring that out. LeBlanc going to be banned. Trindamir also banned. It's another pick from, from JoJo that he has brought out. Uh, they are willing to play this mid lane Trindamir style. So a lot of focus on JoJo Peon on one side, focus a little bit more split on the other, taking away yep. another carry top here for Tony, an sure. AD to complement uh, that AP jungler. Because traditionally we are seeing a lot of double AP soul lanes. Golden Guardians bringing AP jungler means they at least need an AD mid laner or top laner, or it's just gonna be way too easy to itemize. Yeah. So, you know, they do have other options, you know, things like the Camille, you could try to go like mid lane Aurelia or something aggressive if you want, uh, but Jace is really one of the most common ones. So denying those pairings, I think is pretty smart. Yeah, Senna, I don't expect to see happen right here. Uh, I think Senna Ezreal is actually a pretty weak two into overall. Yes, you could send Karma mid or whatever. Um, you're not gonna see it here. Camille does come through. There is your physical damage. Oh, Galio. I'll keep through as well. And I like this Camille Galio is a team fight starter, right? Diana Galio, a team fight starter. I yeah. do like this as a look of, hey, let's just get stuff started. Uh, Ezreal can ult over the top. He's got reach in these fights. I think the comp is actually pretty synergistic here. I like the Vlad Hover for Vulcans, like, yeah, nice job with that one last what's time. What's the pick uh, here for JoJo, though? Uh, what's what's going on in Galio? I can't think right away. Marksmen I are like... really good in Galio. Is what people mm -hmm. people were mm -hmm. playing previously used to play Lucian mid and things like that. But Lucian generally isn't played, um, you know, with without uh, Enchanter supports now. Ooh, we get it after all, though. We get our Lucian. Okay, this is Neat. really interesting because Lucian's not really played in soul lanes much anymore. I'm interested what the, the soul queue data I see you looking up yeah, I'm looking. is actually showing now. Because this used to be considered the, the kind of old counter is that you could just blast this Galio in lane, physical damage, ignore the magic damage shield, and really kind of play that 1v1 pretty heavily. But ever since the, the passive changes where Lucian's passive did a lot more damage when you get shielded or buffed up, you know, by an ally, Lucian was pushed kind of almost exclusively towards bot lane and taken yeah. out of the solo lanes pretty heavily. So it'll be interesting to see if this does work out. Solo Q data says Galio is slightly favored yeah. in that like they have X power levels, Y power level, and then it goes a little bit better towards Galio because the matchup actually isn't too bad. I think some of it is Lucian's yeah, range is short enough yeah. that you just, well, now you're in taunt flash range, right? Yeah. Stuff like that. That said, Solo Q is not pro play, right? No. Reflexes are better. Your coordination with jungler is better. 
things change when pro play and happens. Solo but... lane marksmen traditionally are are lower win rate sure. in solo queue compared to pro. Right. Um, because you really do have to walk that line. You have to harass them enough to get the most out of it, right? You have to play it aggressive. You have to really punish this guy uh, and not get ganked while you're doing it. You can't mm -hmm. just sit down and, and play a, a push back and forth style game as Lucian and Galio. You want to be really pushing the pace. So I'm excited to see it because when people talk about Jojo Pion, they're always like, crazy mechanics, you know, he came from Fortnite, he's a zoomer, he's, you know, got great hands. Well, yep. here's an opportunity to try to show that on a champion that can really showcase just how good you are individually. All righty, well, on to the Rift, let's see what we get out of this one as we get a nice early invade spotted by a ward, though EG, I feel like, have done their research. We saw the level one in the previous game was great, bypassed mm -hmm. the wards, forced a flash out Ooh. of the Sinjao. This is actually really clever, and that, that was Vulcan's ward. So Vulcan went bot, dropped that, recalled, picked up a sweeper. You know, that's more of the jungle move generally. Almost always you'll see supports actually sit on uh, their warding trinket for lane. So I think the reason he's going to do this is he's going to try to play Sidebrush, and he's going to use a sweeper to deny vision from the Karma Ezreal, because having Sidebrush control is one of the only ways that a champion like Lulu can actually fight back against this comp. Because if you get warded out in that brush, there's just no way you're dodging enough of those skill shots to actually stay relevant. But if you can sweep out the ward, maintain control there, you can proc your th spell thieves, and you can kind of... Uh, keep the lane a little bit more even keeled. So it's a cool adaptation, and I'm excited to see how he's going to be able to pull it off. Yep. Ryoma just kind of getting zoned away here a little bit. Yep. I also have to correct myself. Um, I, it automatically showed me uh, bot Lucian versus mid Galio, which oh, is really yes. not that important. Mid Lucian slams mid Galio from solo queue data. So that's what we expected to see. Um, also, you mentioned kind of build uh, optimizations. Uh, commonly, people are going for crit builds. Gale Force Lucian is the normal build now yeah. for solo queue mid lane. So uh, expecting that crit build to be what he goes for. And uh, right now, though, Jinx and Lulu have the early pressure against this Karma Ezreal. Yeah, it'll be interesting, because the last time we used to see this matchup a lot was when it was kind of Lethality Lucian, where it was just you were playing around ultimate, right? Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of power with that ultimate, and obviously the slowdown uh, on that with your items. But it is going to be a different day, and he is playing towards that call. So, you know, really just looking to have the additional sustain off the call yep. to farm up and to really you know, push in as hard as he can, really try to punish Rayoma yeah. as much as possible here, as Iconic, just going to be farming it out, has obviously been fully spotted. We'll see if Inspired wants to try to get aggressive and go for double scuttle. I feel like this is a game where you definitely can, where you have that domination in mid lane. Go towards bot scuttle, take that, move up towards top, but maybe just going to actually cross map, and you can see him invading on the map right now. He's already moving in trying to take away Raptors, and yep. maybe just meet Diana, because they had full eyes on Diana. Yep. So he's actually just going to wait in the Smart brush. by Ryoma. Ryoma's coming down, too. He's like, hey, we know this guy. He wants to invade. I mean, we saw this exact invade in the same matchup when it was TL uh -oh. playing in top lane. It's just a leash, and Tony Top takes a dirt nap. Tony Top is just getting crushed in these games so far, not having the best performance on the Vladimir, and now Impact, three minutes in, gets the solo kill. Ah, it's looking more like Tony Bot. Yeah, it's a rough one here. Gets the knock of his well, so Inspired not only is taking part of the Krugs, he's forcing damage out, or Inspired, he could try for some, even the Smite's gonna claim the big Krug. The bot lane's down here, EG having pressure in there two on two as well. Danny puts the choppers up, they're not gonna nice hit, you. but there might be enough. Right, almost here. The this could be enough, here comes the replay, and we've got a taunt on the two, kill number one, kill number two, yet again, Golden Guardians find first blood that got two picked up. That is huge, grabbing two kills there. Yeah. With the TP from Ryoma, really nice TP. It's so rare to actually see effective early game TPs now yep. without Unleashed Teleport. And I think they just didn't play with any respect to it. They got right in the face of Golden Guardians, but you were playing between two towers. Mm -hmm. So the defensive teleport there is plenty strong. Ryoma arrives and Ezreal gets both the kills, gets a red buff. That is fantastic because EG were actually losing the 2v2. They had been pushed in and were down on farm and now all of a sudden, Ezreal's off to the races, so big mistake there from EG. Yeah, tier start Ezreal gets ahead, that, that's not normal. You can spam your Qs, that's great, but your combat stats are obviously much, much, much lower, but it looks really good. Obviously, yes, Impact got the actual first blood in top lane, but your gold lead is on the Golden Guardian's side. Question is, can you hold on to it this time? Does the cross map play still work, obviously? The eyes in bot lane. Yeah, oof. That is a nice Sheen, couple long swords, that's gonna feel very nice. I always feel like when you, we have the early tier Sheen, it starts to feel really tough to lane against the Ezreal. He hits a Q or two, can get very, very rough, but 
Uh, things could be a little bit brutal up on this top side as well. I mean, the first buy for Tony is, is just nothing, right? Mm -hmm. he, he bought some more pots and he got a long sword. It's a full leeching leer, which is where Gwen starts to, to really be frustrating to play against. You'll get a little bit of that sustain on top of the Conqueror. And when Gwen hits Mythic, she's really a different beast. So uh, this is pretty scary. You find the first taunt. Auto backwards, E1 turret shot. He's going to land Ignite. Only get, almost gets the kill, but a flash to safety as summoners are traded. Nicely done. Yeah, that was a good combo by Realm. It gets a little bit of, you know, time back to himself in this lane. Yeah, and he all he had to use was actually his Predator, right? His Flash and his TP were spent bot, so he just ran at him real fast. There was no boots on JoJo. He hadn't even been back to base to buy at all. So, you know, getting both of those summoners off of JoJo for just your Predator is really, really nice. Yeah. And Ryoma off that bot line playing TP, now a bit of pressure here. Going to be feeling pretty good about his situation in this game. Of course, he is down on farm quite a lot, and that is really where EG's gold lead is coming from. And they're going to keep pressing because, you know, Inspired is not someone to sit back. Um, but Iconic actually going tank Diana. I can't say I've seen this. I, I don't know if this is like the new meta because everyone is just going cam tank on, on just everything and right. being like, well, hey, this item's overpowered. I wonder if it's good on X. Well, a tank Akali is good. Well, you know, I've been seeing it on more and more and more champions. So maybe the read is, well, if it's good on Akali, it's good on Diana too. So, and you're kind of going to work more as just like a CC bot and a frontliner and an engage. Yeah. Very limited data, but both Sunfire Aegis and Turbo Chem Tank have very high win rates. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of room for variance when you've only got one to 2,000 games in each Mythic. I but can see it. Indicates might be worth looking at. Yeah. Not definitely great. I can see it. I mean, I, I think if, if you want to just play as the setup, it's like you have got to dive in and set up Camille and Galio. If that is your read, well, then go a little bit tankier. You're not necessarily going to have the 100 to 0 damage. Uh, and that's maybe where the concern comes from because. I, I can also totally still see the argument for going full AP versus this team. There's Lucian and Jinx and, and Lulu. Yeah. All those champions are so squishy. If you get one good ult, they probably all just die. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a different look, and we'll have to see how he does with it. Devil's Advocate, getting the ult at all, they still die. Yeah, maybe, right? maybe that's all just you need. Just forcing right? it is a kill, maybe. So yeah, I think it's interesting kind of and conversation to have. Track. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think it's going to be really neat. Obviously, you're against a lot of physical damage as well. Sinjar, Lucian, Jinx, pretty much exclusively physical. So as long as it's not Gwen hitting you, you can also just armor stack. The other wrinkle I, I will say is that it can be really frustrating to play assassins against Lulu. And when you know there's an exhaust Lulu, maybe you're just saying, well, my engage is going to get screwed anyway. So I'm just going to go tanky here and I'm just going to get in there for CC and you guys kill him. Galio over the top. Camille over the top. Yeah. Sounds good. Can't exhaust, exhaust the Galio all. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. He's untargetable. He's going to land on you for full damage. So cool look here. Um, I know Predator Galio even itself is not always the pick. Yeah. Uh, Aftershock and, and other things still can work quite well, but Predator, as we saw earlier, allows him to get onto Lucian. Obviously, he has some value there as well. Uh, just burned it recently, but clearly that engage didn't go quite as well as Lucian came out at pretty much full health, and it's Galio taking the recall. 6A still up in gold, but only 300 against um, Impact and Jojo, who are having pretty solid games themselves. Uh, good farm in both cases, and obviously the first blood pretty meaningful for the top laner. Yep. And my, my experience with Predator is generally that it feels like it has more value either in side lane games or early game. You know, as far as team fighting and stuff, it's a, just a lot less valuable. Woo! Oh, he, he got it. it! He got the steal. How about the rest? Galley over the top. Good damage item inspired. Doesn't have a flash. Shouldn't have a way out. Impact versus Tony Top on the side, though. Pretty good damage from the Gwen. Getting some healing. The ulti was late. He didn't dodge any damage, Tony Top. The mechanics are betraying him as the rocket comes across the map. But Shime should find this kill and does. Iconic, though, he's got a Herald. He's not got a lot of health bar left. Tries with the shield, does go down. Four to three on the scoreboard. Gold lead to Evil Geniuses. Big play, though, from Golden Guardians. Able to actually steal the Herald away. They did pick it up, so not too bad at all. Danny, though, farming plates down here. Not perturbed whatsoever by the early double kill here from Sticks. He is pressuring him hard, yep. shoving him in, utilizing that early attack speed that he bought up, and just trying to keep minions in between him and that Ezreal. And you clear that wave much faster than Six A does, so yep. he wants the second plate. Danny power spiked. He recalled for Noon Quiver. I think for the sort of general the Herald play, and Six A is still on that double longsword tier. Sheen he had from the first recall. Mm -hmm. So Six A's got like Mana Moonian base right now. If he had had it here, that was a better fight. But yeah, got pushed in for the item spike. Here it is one more time. You can see Galio Karma moving up on the mini map right down there. Goes in, does actually grab that away. Didn't even use a smite, just got it with the straight up base damages of the Q. And Ryoma not quite able to land the taunt, but it didn't matter. They push through, they get that kill. 
an impact here. Yeah, no dodges by Tony on that. You've got to be able to try to time it on the Q to avoid that damage. Impact had the four stack Q and just chops him down as soon as he does land on the other side. Dojo Pian is able to pick up a kill. Um, but definitely agree, Tony Top's mechanics have been letting him down in the Vladimir game, you know, utilizing the pool incorrectly. Now in this yep. one, not really able to find the plays on the Camille, at least just yet. Yeah, you have to imagine the first blood obviously tilts the items in one direction and then yeah. Yeah, not dodging the, what, seven hit of the ulti. Like that is so much damage and healing because it yeah. applies the passive at full power. Like that's several hundred health difference for just and that. It was really close. Like on that, each champion. It, yeah. could, it could easily have been the difference in, in that him getting the kill instead of impact. So uh, is a tough one, but now impact is going to be significantly ahead. When he, hit, when he hits Riftmaker before you, you just don't get the fight anymore. You nope. know, th then you're just trying to pick up farm, and it's already feeling like it is at that point a little bit. You know, unless Ryoma can get up there, you can really turn the fight, obviously, with a roam from your mid laner or getting Diana to be up there. It is chem tank, so kind of as expected here, uh, coming through. It's going to help with the engage, help with closing that gap, and we'll see how effective Iconic can be. It's also going to hopefully for him reduce his reliance on having flash because flash engages are really a big part of of Diana's play pattern and. With Chem Tank, maybe you can just find a nice Q onto a minion, E to it, Chem Tank in there, catch up, and, and get a decent ult. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be more reliable against the Rocket Belt, but of course, uh, big slows like a Lulu Q will will stymie you for a bit. Shine's going to find the root force, a flash out of Danny, because that would have been all of the iconic follow through. So mm -hmm. now we have a dragon setup coming across here. Gold lead is with Evil Genius's first dragon, theirs as well. We've got a Herald in an inventory, and it could just crash bot lane right now, but they're going to try to set up for the fight. The problem is, can they even fight? Camille's walking down. Galio's on the way over as well. Does have ulti. They don't take a fight at all. They don't herald bot lane. They don't get anything done at all. Instead, we're going to dive in and give up uh, two kills. Golden Guardians once again do absolutely nothing but watch the objectives get taken. And it's Dick Save Force to run away. EG going to win this fight. Danny going to find the zap. The rocket is flashed. Then EG walk away with it. Golden Guardian, sadly, the wrong macro call. Yeah, so they just shouldn't have even been there, right? Tony doesn't have Unleashed TP, and Impact moved way faster. So it's not a fight that they should really be taking. They're down numbers. And now even having to blow the TP here, Impact getting aggressive on a Tony. That's OK. Let me know, of course, Golden Guardians. It is an academy squad. This is not their intended starting roster. Tony Top's going to get out. So look, the, the level of play here is obviously different. EG are one of the big spenders in the LCS, one of the top five spending a yep. lot, right? They bought out Vulcan from, from, from C9 or traded for him or whatever. Like they are spending a lot to bring over the LEC MVP. The expectation is that EG's players are more experienced, better, whatever. And again, Golden Guardians are an academy team. I just want to see the, the sort of sort of moderate level macro of we're behind, we should cross map them. Like just some of the more basic yeah. stuff. Like that's all I'm disheartened about is just there were some more obvious plays that like I feel Camille like continue pushing top, drop Harold bot, get some gold here. They are going top side now. Okay, sidesteps the ulti. That's the setup you want to see. He survives the ignite. Thank you very much. Well played, Golden Guardians. One back on the board. Yep, they get a kill up on top side. Going to be able to push this in, likely grab a plate. So nice play from them. But I agree, you know, you expect them to get out executed, but it is one of those, those macro plays that you want to see them really nail. And I mean, they knew that they were down numbers, but it feels like it's one of those plays where you're feeling a little bit desperate. You feel yeah. that you need to get something done. And oftentimes in those cases, you just end up losing out even more. But Ryoma having a great game, I've got to say. You know, he gets counterpicked here with the Lucian, but he finds the early TP bot, getting them a couple kills. You know, he had the effect of all top side now, getting another kill up there. Uh, Ryoma looking good, and they do have some side lane scaling here with the Camille. And yes, Camille is probably going to keep losing the 1v1 to Gwen because it's very behind, but you always have that X factor of Ryoma coming in, yep. and that can maybe give them a way into this game if they can keep finding side lane kills. Absolutely. And and while this might end up being, assuming Golden Guardians don't come back, the, the last LCS game where Ryoma we see for a while, because yep. I expect the main team to start playing in, in the opening weekend, Ryoma's looked actually pretty good during the He has looked really good. Right, Golden Guardians went one and three in the group stage. Ramo was like good in all six games really so mm -hmm. far. Like I think his victor was solid. He had good damage up, but I think he topped the team in, in, in game one of the series. And yeah, he got counterpicked and is up one KP. Yeah, he's down CS, it's counterpick lane. But like, is getting stuff done? Like I want to say like Ryoma, who's had a very rocky LCS career, has looked really good so far in 2022. And he's always been very good in Academy. You know, right. it's just kind of been bridging that gap for him that has been difficult. But yeah, I mean, he, he got a solo kill, at least one, you know, throughout Lock-In as well. I think it was on uh, Tukoi, uh, if I can recall correctly. It was him or Blue, I can't quite remember. But, you know, has had some really good performances. And obviously, 
you know, Golden Guardians does have some veterans on their team as well. You know, Stix A has been around for a long time as a title. competitive scene. You know, yeah, he's an MSI finalist. He has won the LCS. So uh, they do have some guys with experience here, but obviously trying to build around some of these newer players as well. Yeah. I mean, Tony Top's career started last year in Academy, yep. right? He's got a year and change of his entire career. Uh, and yeah, it, it's it's been a rough road here today, but he's a newcomer, right? Like, give him time and then we'll see it move forward. Top Herald Crash comes in. Second Herald, of course, grabbed this time, not stolen away. So Evil Geniuses claim their second turret of the game as they make this one come through. They keep the 1200 gold lead and they'll get that crash on top side. So there you go. And you've got to say, Inspired not having the best game, you know, compared to compared to what we're expecting from him, right? Right. You know, they did have that really aggressive play early on that got punished very hard on bot side. Since then, it's just been kind of farming even against Diana, right? He hasn't been ahead of the pace of the game. Mm -hmm. Compositionally, you can definitely see Golden Guardians winning this. So as much as it's, it's easy to kind of just count them out because it is EG and because they have been very dominant, it's a full LCS roster here. Uh, Golden Guardians are making him work for it in this one, and we'll yeah. see if they can execute well at potentially this next dragon fight. Because if you can get into the back line onto people like JoJo or Danny, get an initial kill with the Diana plus Galio plus Camille diving in there, the fight really can start to go your way. Guys, right, look for it. Stick to Ezreal has had some truly legendary performances, even on the international stage. So sometimes you see outstanding things. I'm personally still a believer. I think he's actually a great player, big fan of his. So I want to see if he can kind of put the carry pants here. Right now, sidestepping some Lucian damage, and we got a TP in the mid lane. Next Dragon's up in 20 seconds, would put EG at soul point. Golden Guardians, looks like they are willing to fight Ooh. for it. Look at look at Ryoma on the map. He has this, this flank position. He's That'd hiding nice. right here. So if they can come in from multiple angles, you know, and try to collapse here on EG, if they overcommit towards this, 6A yeah. is mid pushing this in. But if EG check for this, this is going to get kind of wow. ugly. And Impact is, is sussing it out. He actually spots him, so really good sixth sense. They yeah. had not seen Galio anywhere. And he's saying, well, where could he be? And that is veteran play from Impact. That's really smart stuff from yeah. him. He says, well, I'm not scared of face checking him. He can't 1v1 me, so I'll just walk through the brush. But Tony and Ryoma is still behind them. Okay. Then they pull off this pincer play. It's got to be well coordinated. Tony goes in first. Jump oh, in. They saw it. you. Didn't get Whimsy. There's Diana Whoa! on the top. They're going to pull on a several. Galio only hits one, and it doesn't kill Vulcan. Goes in for more. Big Taunt. Not going to find a ton. He'll go down. No, he lives. Thank you very much. Triumph, a one for zero so far. Turn it back on the Diana, though. Stopwatch used for impact, and impact lives. Tony Top's forced to run. It is a team fight. Plus one kill, and oh, no. He flash ease into the rocket. Danny claims kill number three. It was a good setup. It was a nice try, but EG run away with the team fight. Yeah, EG, they get it all. They get the kills. They get the dragon. Likely going to take down at least the mid lane tier one here as well. Going to be feeling really good about their chances now and just didn't quite have the coordination on the entrance. It was an incredible ult from Iconic, but Hookshot had already been used by Tony Top and he's not playing Flash. So when that's on cooldown, he can't follow up and they can't get those initial kills. The Galio comes through. They did kill off, I believe it was Vulcan pretty quick, yeah. but Jojo and Danny are really low. 6A had to flash in to try to just get that additional damage, try to finish it off, and unfortunately for them, not quite perfect on that coordination. You know, Tony starts priming this because he thinks Vulcan's going to straight up face check, but he doesn't want to go for it. And now Iconic goes in, big ulti, Purple. but imagine if Tony Top is in the back line right now with him. Instead, he gets knocked back there by Inspired, can't enter that back line. 6A, he's over the wall trying to get in to finish them off. But Jojo and Danny are just kiting back. Inspired flashes in on the Ezreal to knock him up. They push forward. They get those kills. you got to be on the same page with these engage comps. Yeah. If Camille's in the back line and those marksmen die, it's a different game. Yeah. I think Camille, sh I, I think Tony is just like hook shot onto the, onto the Lulu. I sunned you. Ult on a Jinx. Here we go. Right? Yep. And just like, just take the button. You can't just like burn that cool and be like, I'm here. And yeah. then let the disengage or, happen. Or... The, other, the whole team has to wait. The whole team has to wait, and you can't go right then as yeah. Iconic. And you try to push them out, and you try to slow play it, right? But it's got to be one or the other. Yeah. It's always one of those things where it's better to make the wrong decision as an entire team than to have people on either side of it, right? Yeah. And that's, that's where you have to have really clear comms. That's where you have to have really good coordination. And that's one of those things that can look really good or it can look really bad. And unfortunately, in this case, Tony Top not really able to be involved in the fight after that initial hook shot cooldown to use. Well, we go back on the map and we see that we are a dragon away from Soul three minutes out. We almost took it some time in the top lane, which is good to get his farm up. Of course, now down 70 CS under Jojo Pyun. I mean, never going to have the same wave access, yeah. you know, as a winning team Lucian. So it's going to keep going this way, but he'll keep trying. 
Obviously, again, we are going to see some armor stack out of the squad. It is really AD heavy on the EG side. Yes, Apex doing pretty well, but it's 140 CS Gwen. Like, of all the threats, it's, it's one of the smaller ones mm -hmm. at this point in time. So we get to see some steel caps. Okay, great. But not a lot else right now. Um, even right now, Iconic going towards uh, a sidestep to go for some Grievous Wounds. Eventually, he'll get a bit more damage done, but... Yep. Yep, and we'll see where exactly he wants to build from here. But, I mean, Danny probably going to have two items on his base. We already see two done there uh, for Jojo Pion. So yeah, double items on both of these marksmen now. They're going to be feeling really good about their space in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, with Lulu behind them, you really kind of had it hit that critical mass where you start to be really, really strong. Yep. We'll see if they can find any sort of big picks, but I think the game is going to come down likely to this next dragon. If you give over soul to EG, it's so hard to team fight into this into this Chemtech soul. Because even if you get that initial kill on someone like Danny or Jojo, you have to deal with their ghost respawning in four more seconds of pure DPS coming out. And I can't see them winning 5v5s against the soul whatsoever. So uh, they're going to have to find that perfect engage, really be on top of it, coordinate as a team, or EG is just going to run you over. Because in the extended yep. fights, they have just way more DPS. Yep. Even though you live only for about four seconds, even though you do 40% less damage during the zombie form, CC is still full value and it's still more damage. You know, yeah. like a Fed Gwen doing half? It's still decent it's damage, still enough you know, to change the course of the fight. Gets there. Yeah, exactly. So I want to point out as well, uh, both Jinx of the series uh, went Phantom Dancer second on their champion. And they you love a, that. It is it is the it is the generically ideal second item. You are not against an Orin. You're not against a Cyan. You're not against a hard tank. PD is optimal second for DPS. Like, you get the move speed for kiting. It's higher DPS. Like, that is the real build. Ooh, see you do this one. Yes, a fight in the top side. Big damage onto Impact, who cannot get away. And on the board, once again, Golden Guardians. Now, I don't think they can burn down the Baron, but they can turn back the rest of this one. Danny taking the fight with Stixay. Tried to go for a bit of a Gale Force burst. I don't think he quite got the pellets out of the Gale Force, no. though. I think it was too much to the side. I wasn't sure if he was trying to just put it the minimum amount forward to get it and, and not really overcommit into the brush, or if he was just using it in anticipation to dodge the next Q. Mm. It could be either or, because he kind of used it like a little sidestep. Yeah. Uh, but either way, Dragon is up here in 30. They do kill off Impact, but critically, Impact didn't use any cooldowns. He didn't even spend all. He's just like, all right, yep, I'm dead. Uh, but he's going to have everything available for the next fight, and he's going to have his TP. Ryoma's not going to have ulti now for, for this initial spawn, and I think that, yes, you've got a kill, but it actually hurts your chances in the game more than it helps because the 300 gold doesn't matter, and you don't have your critical cooldowns for the engage on soul spawn. Nice thing to pick someone apart oh, right now. Iconic wants in. Ezreal to the side makes some space. Danny does not get hit with the pull, though, so Iconic gets nothing done, and in comes Inspired. One for nothing so far. Time to run away. Danny's going to be able to free hit. Stopwatch for Ryomi, he's still gonna die at the end. There's no way out of this one. Slowed down by Lulu and kills on the board. Three for nothing as Impact dives in for a final kill. Tony Top is down and Dragon Soul is going to Evil Geniuses. Really nicely done there by EG. They TP back in here and get a good engage, but oh. That's killable. Good move speed. Yeah, forcing the flash at a 6A. Summoning heal for move speed as well. Does live. Shine gets a slow, not gonna mean much again. Ah, uh, Danny! Yeah, oh, that's no. gonna be a kill of the crits! Oh, just unlucky there. Had a coin flip, didn't get it. Heads. Be careful, because 6 is still on the way forward. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, the Gale Force. <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, that one stings, dying to the Gale Force like that. Yep. He knew he had the E to react to the Zap, but obviously didn't have the Gale Force cooldown timed, and that's going to finish him off. EG, they keep getting engaged on. Iconic's finding multi-man alts, but it's just not ones that the team can follow up on or not ones that the team is yep. really on the same page for. And whatever it is, they're just not making it work. He gets exhausted as he goes in. The marksmen then are going to go wild and fishing for something. Okay, impact. Going to find himself rooted in place, ignited. Iconic is here. He have the damage. Q doesn't hit because he's unstoppable. And now we oh, get to go into the melee range. Zonia's burned. This could be danger. A lot of damage. And yeah, it is just Iconic getting burned down. They get the kill, but it's a two for one. Not a lot going to happen for this uh, zombie Gwen. Just walks through the river and dies, but plus one EG. And no juggler. Baron. It's yep. an easy Baron here. There's not really any ability to contest this. They do kill off impact. You've got to take risky plays, though, when you're this far behind. So don't hate them going for it. But it will be Baron. It will be Soul. Everything now in EG's favor. 6A trying to look for the Miracle Steel, but they like waited the out. That's really smart. Yeah, I think he was on a mini wave when doing it. So they're like, oh, Ezreal, OK, 2K. Impossible to steal. Chill, yeah. chill. All right, cool. Take it down. Well played. Really well done by EG, and now it's just the finishing touches that they have to put on this series. They were the big favorites, but they have looked good doing it. Yeah. Really impressive uh, performances, I think, pretty much across the board here from EG. And 
Yeah, and, and honestly, I was pleasantly surprised by Golden Guardians. To me, on paper, this was the least close match mm -hmm. uh, between the two teams. I mean, it's literally undefeated EG and a 2-2 two and two Academy team who went 1-3 in lock-in, right? Yep. Their win was against another Academy team in TSM. So, yeah, wasn't expecting big things, but we had the glimmers of hope, right? Like, we had some nice moves. Uh, we had early kills in the bot lane in both games here, so well done to Chime and Stixay. Yeah. I think those players are very good. I'm looking forward to their continued careers, you know, on both sides. Uh, but yes, EG... The much, much better team comes with the lead by 20 minutes every time. And I like the comps. I think it, they took some cool swings. The Vladimir could have worked out. Obviously, it didn't quite. And I think this is a pretty cool hard engage style comp. But again, just not quite having that coordination. But as you say, you can see the glimpses. You can see if they could pause that up a little bit. You know, they had their opportunities in this one. Um, but it's also been fun to see the different looks here from EG. You know, more the supportive style last game with the Senna. This comp all about kind of global presence, evading with the Olaf, supporting with the TF and cross map Senna plays. And then here, just going straight at him with fifth pick counter pick of the Lucian straight up into Ryoma. Yeah. Has the flame horizon now. He is monstrously ahead. And it is not only more fun to watch teams that, that can threaten these crazy picks, but it's also really tough to draft against them because you have to pay respect to so many of these niche picks. Yep. If they are willing to bring out these kind of more solo queue counters, things that you're not playing against right. a lot in competitive, when's the last time he played Galio versus Lucian? Wasn't in competitive any time recently. So yep. it's one of those things that you have to have the confidence and EG is showing, yeah, we're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Really cool to see. Yeah, I think there are always like a lot of what people consider safe blind picks. Like, oh, they don't have any bad matchups. Like, what's the one to play them, right? Like, Gwen was a safe blind forever because her hard counters were Jackson Riven. Yeah, yep. no one plays those outside of China, so they're safe blinds in, you know, three of the four best leagues in the world. And, you know, then you get to try it elsewhere. But now we got to play up the top side. Impact, he's going to be a zombie pretty soon. No, nope, not even that. Able to walk away. Thanks very much. Sorry, buddy. Down to the bottom side. We have a kill once again on the Gwen. Uh, we're going to have a Galio just to get to the side in time to defend the base, but it is a four versus five as Impact even TPs in for a bit more. <laughs> the wave is down. It's going to take a little bit of time here as the cannon slowly picks away at it. I love the TP in with 10% health. He's just not afraid at all. Rampa nope. Impact here with the Zoomers to finish off the game. There we go. A knock up again on an Impact. Not going to matter here. Inspire to the front line. Going to look for Iconic. Going to find that kill and almost a solo, but Danny claims it. With like a Penta, it's not going to happen. No flashes in for the rocket. There's the double. There's the Nexus and the 2-0 for Evil Geniuses. Really well played by EG, looking like, I would say, our most dominant team throughout lock-in. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think you predicted them as the winner. A lot of us had them as a finalist, but clearly I think they have to be considered as one of the big front runners now. Looking really, really good. 6-0 across all the games. It's shaping up to maybe be a, a date with TL, potentially, who has also sure. been one of those strong teams. But or Dignitas. Yeah, or Dignitas. <laughs> Uh, there's obviously a lot of teams still to play, so uh, a lot can happen, but but I've been really pleasantly surprised by how quickly EG feels like they've gelled, right? Yeah. Because yes, this is a team that people were predicting do very well. Yes, they have really strong players, but a lot did change, right, for this team. It is, it is a rookie mid laner, it is bringing in a new support to play with your, your kind of star uh, rookie from last year, bringing over a different jungler with a very different style of play, and everything just kind of seems to be working pretty much immediately. Yeah, really cool to see. Well done to EG, of course. Hey, by the way, stay tuned. CLG Cloud9 is next, so more matches today. But Evil Geniuses take the series and their spot in semifinals against the winner of that match later today. We are now joining the State Farm Analyst Desk to take a look at that incredible performance.